I guess the question to start the whole conversation would be like, what do you believe or do you not believe in anything? Just don't believe in anything. Just don't believe in anything? No. I'm more of a C type of guy. All right. I just see it to believe it. See it to believe it. All right. Kind of odd question. Do you see the wind? No. No. All right. Like there's a lot of things in this world that we don't see. That doesn't mean that those things specifically are not real. You know what I mean? Yeah. Would your biggest objection be that you haven't seen God and stuff like that? It's not like I don't believe in it. It's more the fact that someone else having like control over my life, I just don't like. Okay. Like, so the idea of like submitting to a God and kind of like leading your life doesn't sound so hot, right? Yeah. So I guess the question I'd have is like, do you trust that your parents have your best interest in, in mind? At least one of them does. At least one of them? Okay. That's one way in which I would describe God, right? As a father who has our best interest in mind. And there's a lot of times in which we might not necessarily like the fact that he has our best interest in mind in the way in which he, in the way in which is our best interest, right? But we believe in a God and I believe in a God that is perfect, right? He doesn't make mistakes. He is the source of all things that are good. And if he is the source of all things that are good, then the life that he has for me and the life that he has for anyone he creates is the better life than we could create for ourselves. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. I never really did much looking into like Christian and Christianity and that stuff. I was always just there. I didn't really pay attention much. Like, I guess we'll start with this is, do you believe that there's a higher being or God out there? I believe there could be and there also couldn't be. Okay. Can I share with you why I believe that there is a higher being? Yeah. All right, so the universe can't just pop out of nowhere. Um, and everything we understand about science, nothing can just come out of nowhere, right? Um, there has to be an instigator for things to happen. Even I think that, that nothing can be created or nor destroyed, right? So something to create that original matter. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying is, is God is that. He is the initiator of the start of the universe. Now, what people will then say, well, if God created everything in this thought process, then who created God? What Christians believe is that God is the first uncaused cause, which means he's always eternally been existing because when he created this universe, he created time, the idea of time where we know that the universe has been growing and expanding since its beginning, right? There is a beginning of the universe. Time was created when the universe was created. So before there was time, there was no time, which means God exists outside of time. Does that make sense? Pretty much he just doesn't age is that kind of what you're saying he's not yeah exactly like he he is not bound by time he was never created and he will never end so we've established okay there's got to be a god there's got to be a higher being but where does christianity come into all this how do we know christianity is true uh because it'd be foolish for us to just you know put our lives into something that isn't true the way in which i think about it is the resurrection of jesus christ that my entire faith my entire belief in Christianity is held by the resurrection of Jesus. And you might you might not know anything about Jesus. Um, how much do you know about Jesus? Maybe that's a better question. Not much. Not much? All right. So Jesus is God in the flesh, the eternally existing God that's always been existing in human form. He humbled himself to become like a servant, to become uh, like a man with human flesh on. And Jesus lived on this earth. He lived the perfect life. He loved God perfectly and he loved people perfectly, right? When Jesus lived on this earth, people didn't like Jesus because he made claims that nobody else could make, right? He claimed to be God. He claimed he had the ability to forgive sin, um, to do all these miracles that he was doing. And people didn't like that. People didn't like the, the person Jesus claimed to be. They called it blasphemy that he claimed to be God. And if he wasn't God, that blasphemy would be true. But what Christians believe that because Jesus is God, he can live the perfect life. And when he lives the perfect life, he then sacrifices himself on the cross for me and you. And something you might be wondering is like, why would he have to sacrifice himself? Why would he have to die on the cross? And it's because all of us are sinners. Like you've already said is all of us are sinners. None of us deserve a relationship with God and God has to pour out his wrath. He has to punish sinners. Just like if me and you were to break a law in this world, we, we have to be punished, right? If God weren't to punish lawbreakers, then he would not be just and he wouldn't be righteous. Jesus comes and takes on the punishment me and you deserve on the cross. He lays down his life and takes on the wrath of God that me and you deserve so that if whoever would believe in him, believe that he is God, lived on this earth, died on the cross, resurrected the dead three days later, would not perish, 
so would not have to suffer the wrath of God, but would be able to have everlasting life. And the one easy thing people could have done to disprove Christianity and disprove Jesus' resurrection is provide evidence. Like Paul said, uh, one of the writers in the Bible said, show me the evidence. And they try to show him the evidence. Uh, or nobody, nobody could show him the evidence of Jesus' body. And the reason I'm confident Jesus actually resurrected the dead is because Jesus' brother James, he used to call Jesus crazy. And then he became the leader of the church in the city of Jerusalem, which is like the heart of Judaism, right? And when he becomes this leader, there's a reason why he changed from Jesus, you're crazy to telling people about his brother and about what his brother did. And the reason why is because of the resurrection. If it wouldn't have been, if it wouldn't have been for the resurrection, everyone would have just gone their own way. But the resurrection is the proof that Jesus is God. Everything he said and did was true. And what he says is that no one can come to the father except through me. That makes a lot more sense than I would think, because you can't just switch up like in three minutes. Because if you thought he was crazy, then it would take a lot of proof to prove that he's not. Yeah. And then switch like that. I guess that makes a lot of sense. On top of that, Jesus' disciples, he had 12 disciples, right? Every single one of them ended up dying, saying that they saw Jesus resurrecting the dead. Not that they, you know, believed it like I would say, right? I would die for believing that Jesus resurrected the dead. But like you said earlier, you got to see it to believe it. Well, the disciples saw it, right? And they ended up dying for it. And I feel like at some point, right? I don't know about you, bro. I would never die for a lie. 11 of the 12 disciples of Jesus died for this quote unquote lie that people would say, which doesn't make sense. And then the 11th one was exiled to an island to live uh, away from people and boiled in oil. I don't know about you. At some point, I go, hey, it was a joke, bro, right? I promise you it was a joke. I was kidding, stuff like that. You eventually fold and... Yeah, exactly, yeah. right? There's a reason people use like torture methods in war, right? Because eventually people break. They tried their best to get these guys to break and they didn't break. I know I would break. I know many of us would break. 100%. Because it's not worth, a lie is not worth giving up my life for. That made a lot more sense than I would ever thought, to be honest. So is what you're saying is like human nature is to sin, but then why would God, if God is real and create the humans to sin instead mm -hmm. of doing the opposite? Yeah. So we weren't created as sinners but we instead inherited this sin so this is this is the this is the way the bible starts is that god creates the entire world and then he creates man to care for the entire world world to be his representation on earth um to steward the world adam and eve get deceived by the devil basically saying hey if you eat of this tree of the knowledge of good and evil you can become like god so the heart of Sid is us becoming like God. That's what separated us from God in, in the first place is because we're like, hey, we want to become like God. Um, we want to choose our way over God's way. God in his, who he is, knew that would happen because I don't think any, nothing surprises God, but it doesn't mean that he created us for that. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's just human nature and not him sinning. Yeah, it, yeah, that he's not sinning. It's like a disease, right? Sin is like a disease that is passed down generation to generation that no one can be rid of. When Jesus dies on the cross, he makes us, makes what we look like in the eyes of God as white as snow. When God looks at me, he doesn't see my sin anymore. Rather, he sees Jesus's perfection. It's called the... Um, imputation of Christ's righteousness. So Jesus's nature, Jesus's perfection is passed on to me. This gave us like kind of a reset. Yeah. Not even a reset, but like, like we, it's not like we do it to fix it. Like, like there's no more condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. There is no more. When God looks at me, he no longer sees my sin. He sees perfection. And when I sin again, he will still see perfection. What exactly do you mean by that? So because God is holy and perfect, the only people that are allowed into his kingdom are those who are also holy and perfect. But is anybody perfect? Exactly. None of us are perfect except for God himself. That's yeah. where Jesus' righteousness, his perfection was passed on to us. This is one of my favorite analogies, right? Before Jesus, before we know Jesus, we have this t-shirt on that says sinner. God can't let people on into heaven with a sinner t-shirt. What Jesus did on the cross is he took off his perfect t-shirt 
and put on the sinner t-shirt, put on our t-shirt and paid for the punishment, took on the wrath of God that we deserve, and then passed to us the perfect t-shirt. So Jesus took on the wrath of God, so we don't have to. If new one just switched spots with us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He, sw he switched with us. He, he switched places in the courtroom with us. So like, we have no right to be in heaven because of our sin. But the beauty of God's grace is that because of the work of Jesus on the cross, we can then be led into heaven. Wait, so if everyone's allowed into heaven, what draws the line between heaven and hell? So everyone's able to be in heaven doesn't mean that everyone goes to heaven. So it's trusting in Jesus that on that cross, he paid, his, he paid that punishment because a lot of people will either reject Jesus or reject his sacrifice. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. So you have to trust in the Lord Jesus, right? But if you reject Jesus, then that means the sacrifice on the cross was not for you. Everyone has the opportunity. There's no one based on race, ethnicity, religion you were born into that is separated from the love of God. What separates people from the love of God is the rejection of God. So I was always told that you go to heaven and hell based on your actions, not because of if you believe in Jesus and God. Is it like a balance? What do you mean by like a balance? Like just balancing between being good and bad. No, because saying, because none of us are good. No one is good, no, not one. I guess that makes sense, because nobody, to be good, that means you do something good and not bad, but everyone does something bad eventually. Yes, 100%. Everyone, do, everyone is sinners against the holy God. So the beauty of, the beauty of it, right, is even though we can never be good enough for God, that's the beauty of the cross, is that Jesus, God said, I, this is a burden you cannot bear. I'll bear it for you. I guess that makes a lot of actual sense. Yeah. I never it, really looked into it. I was always just told bits and pieces, so it didn't really make sense. 100%. And yeah, now the more I think about it, the more it makes sense. <laughs> I'm going to take some time to take in, though. Dude, I love it. What's your name again, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, Like my actual name? Yeah, if you don't, if you don't Logan. mind. Logan? All right. Yeah. Logan, we'll be praying for you, dude. Thanks for reaching out and being like, hey, let's have a conversation. I'm an atheist, but let's see what happens. Yeah. Have a good Thank one, dude. You.